Hi, it's Paul Smack. It's Good News Planet. I'm speaking to Douglas C. Smythe. He's an author. Hi, Douglas. How are you? I'm fine, fine. Good. Um, Princess. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, I was going to say uh, the, what, we, what you're calling about is uh, Princess Olga. Uncovering, I am. Uncovering my uh, heart, uh, headstrong mother's Venezuelan connection. Well, there's a lot of title. <laughs> yeah, well, uh-huh. actually, there, there, the, re- the reason I, um, I insist on that is because there are actually two Princess Olga books out on Amazon uh, listed, uh, one after the other. Mine is the second one listed. Uh, the other one is about uh, the, um, the Russian princess uh, that she was named for. Aha, uh-huh. okay. And she was named for her because of any special reason. Was it, wasn't that a fictitious name? Or was that a real name for her? You're, a, you're Princess Olga. No, that was her real name. I mean, her, well, her name was Olga, not Princess Olga. But uh, she was <laughs> named after the uh, Princess Olga, who was the uh, sister of the reigning Tsar of Russia uh-huh. in 1913. So he was still the reigning Tsar, and she was off on in the Caribbean, uh, traveling around, and uh, she saw this beautiful baby, and she said, "Why, well, you must name her after me." <laughs> yeah, all right. And, well, and so uh, her mother did, and she had another name um, that uh, she w- became her middle name uh, later on, which I never knew about actually until um, until. Practically uh, a couple of weeks before she died, um, but her her uh, her brother um, mentioned it in in uh, in passing. I'm not not the name, but the the initial. Um, anyway, um, so it's about uh, her. Uh, it, it's a story that starts out on her 97th birthday, and she's. Uh, She's sort of uh, interrupted in in her sort of dream world or dream memory, um, and what she's mem- remembering is um, her life in Trinidad, where she grew up, um, because her mother had taken her and her brother, and then her younger brother was born there, um, because uh, she had told her husband. I will not raise my children in the jungle because he was going to be stationed in Am- the Amazon uh, over- overseeing the, um, the, the gold, uh, um, gold mining going on there for the regime, for the, for the dictatorship. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And uh, so uh, that's how they encountered Princess Olga. And uh, it, it really, I think it had an effect on my father because she sort of always thought of herself as the princess herself. Uh-huh. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> um, so this is the word the, headstrong. Headstrong. <laughs> headstrong, yes, exactly, yes. <laughs> and then uh, I, I, I had a real reason for writing the story, um, mm-hmm. which I checked up on, checked with her uh, uh, occasionally because I knew that she was sort of dreaming back and I would ask her if she was dreaming about Trinidad. Oh, maybe. She would be very coy about it. And But then when I told her what I had written, she said, well, that sounds right. So anyway, what, they, what the story was about um, is it was a kind of a family mystery. Um, her mother had a, a very large, beautiful house on one of the best uh, residential streets in uh, Port of Spain, in Trinidad. Um, the, the it was right across from the Savannah, which is, was a, a very um, you know upscale area and and, and was a, like an open area that um, people traveled around in their carriages and showed themselves off that kind of thing. And uh, she also had another house uh, that she had bought. She bought both of them. She owned them outright. Um, and she had a, uh, a shitload of servants. I mean, she, she had uh, servants for each of her three children. She had a cook. She had um, a, um, a gardener. She had yard boys. Um, she had 
a, uh, a butler. Uh, he actually sort of volunteered to become the butler, and, uh, and so he was sort of prom- uh, promoted to that. Um, and, and that's as far as I know, but there probably were others, others as well, like uh, laundry, uh, laundry women and so on. So she was living quite well. They were all living quite well. Um, my mother was going to uh, a, 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 a French medium school in um, not, you know, pretty close, pretty close to the house. Um, and then suddenly they left, and they left all that property, and um, it was left, com- you know, completely unsettled. Um, my uncle went back there 40 years later and was able to get a legal settlement in which probably the owners, then owners, um, paid about five or six thousand uh, dollars to uh, to get uh, uh, you know to clear their title, and that was it. So uh-huh. obviously there was a some reason why they left so suddenly. And when I asked my uncle why, he said, oh, well, your mother was just so brilliant we had to go get her better schools. And that made no sense at all. Mm-hmm. And then I, then I thought about that, and then I realized that not only was uh, my mother's father working for the regime, his younger brother was the consul general of, of uh, Trinidad uh, for for the uh, Venezuelan regime, and her, uh, most of her other brothers, his other brothers, were also working for the regime. And when I looked a little bit more about who they were working for, uh, they were working for the guy who was basically in charge of security. Mm-hmm. So, you know, they were sort of like um, keeping an eye on things, like keeping on... First of all, um, my grandfather um, courted my mother in, on the island of Coche when he was the administrator of the salt works there, which is a, a state monopoly that uh, they used to, uh, um, in, instead of taxes. Um, and then from there he was sent to uh, oversee the gold works in... Uh, uh, in the Amazon, so you know, obviously he was uh, keeping his his eye on the money coming in for the government. Wow. So you know, and I and I think the and and the consul the consul general in in Puerto Spain was also there in part because uh, it was a it was a large exile community, and they weren't happy with the government in Venezuela. So that be- made me start to think, well, maybe this was one of the reasons why they left so suddenly. So that's basically how the story starts. And when I tried it out on my mother, she said, well, that sounds right. <laughs> <laughs> Good job, my son. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yeah. Well, you're really a, a beautiful writer, very descriptive. It's a beautiful book, um, and very, uh, you know, a real, a real. I mean, it's a real tale <laughs> you're telling. <laughs> well, thank you. Yeah, I, I, I also, I mean, so yeah, the book goes between her in her in, in her present day mode in in the sort of adult home, and uh, and her life in. Um, as a as a child, and then um, it goes through her young adulthood until so this, just, just after I was born. This is a, a a real picture on the front and back cover. Yes, those are <laughs> real pictures. Yes. yes. The well, the back the cover front. does have. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. The back cover yeah, definitely back. has a closure, a closure to it, or an interesting yeah. uh, perspective of a of a back of an. A, 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 is this the same woman? Yes. Well, but not no. the same, not the same age. That right. Was when she looks... was. That was when she was uh, twenty. Uh, uh-huh. When On the back. when my father uh, took the picture, they were engaged. Ah, uh, okay. <laughs> uh, it was 1933. They were married in 
So look at the beautiful dress she she has on the and the and the and the, and yeah, the bonnet. Yeah, her first uh, long dress. She told me, and it was she she got it for her graduation from grammar school. Wow, and the shoes and the yeah. Oh, uh, it's, it's lace. It looks, it looks like a lace dress. Yes. Yeah. Uh, very, very in a, in a, in a in a garden. So where was this garden photo? Uh, do you do in, you in, recollect? In Trinidad. You in, 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 in Trinidad. Trinidad. Okay. Belmont Circle was the address. Uh huh. Belmont Circle is still a very very uh, fashionable address. Yeah. So, so so you know, not everybody has this wonderful opportunity to actually know a lot about their own families. <laughs> Right, right. <laughs> to be perfectly frank with you, I happen to be one of those lucky people, okay? And uh -huh. I, we grew up in Tarrytown. I know you're up in the Hudson Valley right now living, but, right. you know, we had a small little town, and everybody kind of knew everybody, and just, you know, had every Schuster, mother librarian, you know, little, little town. Um, right. And you got to know a lot about this, but you really had a nice uh, rapport, a nice relationship though, with with your, with your yeah, well, so, my mother was right? not an easy person. I mean, I... Uh, headstrong, I, I was, headstrong. Headstrong, <laughs> exactly. And, and um, I mean, she, she, um, she founded, the, founded High Valley, which uh, became a school. Um, and um, my father was, you know, co-founder, but she, it was basically her, her energy and vision that um, created it. And uh, after my father died at the uh, age of 60, um, my mother lived on for another 40-something years, uh, 41 years, I think, or 42 years, anyway. Um, and uh, for the next 18 or 20, she actually ran the school um, herself alone, with, with, and she doubled the size of the school, um, both the uh, enrollment and the, um, the staff, and probably quadrupled the budget. Ah, uh -huh. okay. So, okay. Quite a personality. She did it right. Now, yeah. I, 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 we're actually meeting to, um, I, I will say, my good friend, uh, Mr. Alatara, um, right. who uh, at my office and TV studio uh, uh, was for 10 plus years in, uh, uh, over there in 33 Flatbush, Brooklyn, New York. Um, and Al is a, is a fantastic, I'm crazy. I love Al. He's a great, uh -huh. great man. And, uh, um, and we would talk. And so I've seen the plans of the High Valley. I've been in high, uh, up there myself a few times. Um, and uh, it is one great, great and, and uh, physical um, uh, location with the, the, the pond there and the house and the, and the woods and uh, it, it's really a very special uh, a special place but I think what I'm going to say is that because Al is a special guy and he's uh, a forward thinker and, and an appreciator of one art and, and, uh, and nature and so on mm -hmm. when he fell in love with that place Al was really really one happy guy and uh, they were able to work out whatever the business arrangement was. And uh, he wants to do so many things there um, because he, he's sort of a little headstrong. No, <laughs> he has his, he's a strong personality that gets things done. What do you think? You've got to have a little bit of strength in your, in your character to make something happen? What do you think? Oh, yeah, I think so, yeah. And, and, and uh, yeah, I'd say that there are certain, certain similarities between Al and uh, my mother. And it probably mm -hmm. took someone like that to uh, to take over High Valley from her. Yeah, definitely. Interesting. It's interesting. Yeah. Uh, they're they're doers. They make things happen. Mm -hmm. Yep. <laughs> they do. But but in a good, great, kind, loving way. Now you might, with an educational uh, interest and uh, and to further uh, you know uh, uh, mankind. I'm going to say. I'm going to yeah. put it that way. Yeah. Yeah. She. I mean, basically, uh, High Valley School. Uh, which um, she started with my father uh, as a um, what they called a boarding adjunct to the Poughkeepsie Day School, and then it became independent about ten years later. Um, it uh, it was like um, um, special ed before special ed was known as a you know, a system at all. And mm -hmm. Basically, she was she was making it up, and she pretty much uh, you know succeeded in doing that. That's why when she when she um, started running it herself alone, um, she uh, contracted with the uh, 
local school districts and uh, because they needed somebody to um, to take the children that they couldn't couldn't handle didn't know how to handle and she did so well, the, the book is really a very very interesting very uh, fascinating read it's, it's a you know we got seems to have a lot of outreach right now for the uh, women's movement i'm going to say here uh -huh. yes. in, in today's terminology you know she'd be she'd be standing up here on the on the podium sure <laughs> your mother yeah uh the, undoubtedly and uh, and this is this is a wonderful uh, um i would say uh, attribute and uh, accomplishment and uh, and you're a fortunate son. The, your website is very nice. You got a, a great website. We'll link over to that. You have right. other books uh, about life at, <laughs> at 75. You have a uh, interesting garden series, zucchinis and tomatoes, uh, <laughs> and your history. I mean, you've been a writer for a few days, right? Uh, for a few days, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All about, over uh, the world. About 30 years, yeah. Yeah. What do you like about writing? Let me. Uh, uh, what's good news well, for you? Let me ask you. It's really. Um, I guess it's for me. It's. Um, I, I, mean, I think more clearly when I'm writing, and, I, and I'm able to sort of uh, create a uh, whole world, uh, like with the uh, with my book on Attila, which was basically his autobiography, fictional, of course. Mm -hmm. um, it was, uh, you know, imagining myself a as Attila, uh, mm -hmm. and uh, and you know, and his how he felt and uh, what he told his scribes, uh, and uh, you know, like that. Um, it so it was. It, um, it's just very. It can be very all encompassing. At the moment, I don't have any book on on uh, that I'm working on. Um, I'm planning on going to. Uh, I'm, I'm going to. I mean, I'm scheduled to go to India uh, next month, um, mm -hmm. where I was. Where I was doing. I did research for a year, when I, uh, for a dissertation. So uh, I'm hoping that a book will come out of that, but I don't know quite what it will what it'll be yet. Mm -hmm. All right, you got good stuff. Let me ask you one last question. And then we're going to link on over to this, and I thank you very much uh, for taking some time to uh, to share your your good news with us. And uh, we're involved with the International Day of Peace called Peace Day, and I've asked thousands of people, "What does peace mean to them?" So, uh, Douglas, uh, what what does peace mean to you? What peace means to me is <laughs> um, no war, and I think, uh, but also people helping each other, cooperating. Uh, rather than fighting each other. Okay, sounds good. Okay. And uh, and and if so, <laughs> thank you, Douglas. Thank you very much for sharing the good news with us. And uh, actually, I look forward to meeting you up there, and uh, or if you're in the city. So, uh, okay. looking forward. Thank you so much. Thank you. Right. Bye bye.